Good morning, Hacksters. Today we have uh, an exciting new friend in the studio. And uh, this is the Seed We Know Shell. Let me pull it up for you. And actually, double check that my mic is working because we've had a little bit of trouble lately. Yes. Good. All right, so uh, this is the Seeduino shell. It is a tiny board based on the SAMD21 chip, uh, which is also in various Arduinos that you might have heard of, as well as the new Adafruit Cutie Pie. Uh, it's a similar idea. It's a very small board, and you can load it up with Arduino or Circuit Python, and it's packaged like a piece of candy, which is kind of amazing. So let's get this open. I'm curious about what all the things in here are. So we've got your shell board, which is, as it says, extremely tiny. Let me focus on this better for you. Yes. So we've got your little uh, SAMD21 in under there, your USB-C port, and you've got 14 pins. These are uh, sort of combo analog and digital pins. And you've got these little stickers, it looks like. I didn't even realize it came with stickers uh, to help you remember which pins are which. And it's several different colorways, which is kind of great. So I'm going to take this one and stick it on there. And let's see. VCC ground, 3v3, 10. So this goes like this. And it just goes on that little package like so. Huh. All right, so now we have our pins labeled. Um, I want to try getting this up and running with Arduino, but first I'm going to show you the materials online that they have. Uh, Seed is generally really good about updating their wiki and giving you really clear getting started instructions when you check out one of their boards. So let's pull that up really quick. Here we have the Seeduino Shell product page, which is where you can buy it. It's $4.90, which is ridiculous. Um, there's a number of tiny little boards coming out, like the, the Cutie Pie from Adafruit is six bucks. Um, and that's got its own sort of set of features. This one is $5 or $4.90. And let's check out some of the specs. So we've got the ARM Cortex M0 Plus 32 bit 48 megahertz microcontroller with 256 kilobytes of flash and 32 kilobytes of SRAM. Uh, it does say up here that it's compatible with the Arduino IDE, but on their wiki, they also have directions for setting it up with CircuitPython. This little tiny Arduino, uh, due to the fact that they're sh saving space on it, does not have a reset button, but it's apparently really easy to reset it using these two pins that you see here. Um, let me pull this up. <clears throat> these two little pins, if you short them together, that's a reset pin and ground. So instead of having a button, you can use a pair of tweezers or whatever, uh, and that should still work fine. You've got four LEDs on here. You've got RX, TX, a power LED, and a user programmable LED, which we're going to try and get up and running in a second. Somebody says, ooh, ah, oh, it's true. It looks extremely tiny and cute. I love this thing. Let's take a look at more of the information on here. It says it's as small as a thumb, but honestly, it's small as like the end of my thumb. It's ridiculous. For wearable devices and small projects. So. For wearable devices, I really like to have a tiny um, microcontroller, but I also like to have a battery. And this is battery friendly. It has <clears throat> a special bonding pad on the bottom for batteries. On their wiki, they have all the different pins labeled. Here we go. Uh, IO clock, voltage in and ground. On the right here, you see those battery pins. Um, and all kinds of diagrams to help you figure out what to do with this guy. So if you just scroll down on the main wiki page, which is linked in the description below, you'll find the instructions for Arduino. And here's your re reset information. Here we go. Uh, so software. For step one, download and install Arduino. Uh, if you've already got it, you can open up the Blink example. In order to add the Seeduino, you can't just look in the boards manager. You have to actually uh, add this custom board manager URL. But that's really easy to do in the preference menu under File. 
So you just throw that in. Uh, if you already have some URLs in there, just put a comma after it and add this one. And then you'll be able to pull this up in the boards manager. I'm not sure if it was my version of Arduino or if um, it's just a matter of it being a large set of boards. But when I installed this um, set of boards in the board manager, it took quite a while, but not too bad, maybe like five minutes, but longer than usual. Uh, but that. That's fine. Don't worry about it. It should complete anyway. Uh, I have not obviously plugged this in yet since I just got it out of the package. So I want to do that in a second. But first, let's look at more of the info. So yeah, it says multiple development interfaces, 11 digital slash analog pins, 10 PWM pins, one DAC output. So you can convert digital to analog some signals and have an actual true analog output, which is pretty cool. Um, an I squared C interface, a UR interface, and a spy interface. <laughs> I like how they describe it as what a small size and cute looking. It's true. Uh, actually, the Xiao name of this board means small in Mandarin. It's extremely cute. Okay, let's plug this in and see if we can't get it uh, up and running. So I'm going to go here and. In a second, I think it would be also fun to plug it into this breadboard. But for now, uh, <laughs> I don't want to clip this directly into my breadboard. So I'm just going to change the focus. And we'll have it down there. Let's get this plugged in. And uh, as you see, this has its little headers that it comes with. So it is breadboard friendly. You could just stick those in and, uh, oh, ooh, nice. Do they have these offset? No, uh, it happens to be a really nice friction fit. So I'll just stick that in as is, and I can solder it up in a second. Uh, leave that sticking out over the edge. Yes. plug this into my computer. Ha! It's so small. Uh, for comparison, I actually pulled out this DigiSpark board, which is a similar size. Uh, it's designed to plug directly into your USB port. And this has been around for a number of years. It's based on the at tiny 85. And uh, you've got a number of pins on there, but not really very many. And compared to the 14 on the Cutie Pie, that's very exciting. Um, so yeah, if you have a DigiSpark, you can sort of compare the size. It's almost about the same. Uh, it doesn't have the built-in USB port, but uh, I'm going to USB-C anyway, so that's pretty good. All right, let's see if we can't get this blinking. I've fired up my Arduino IDE. I'm going to, let's take a look at this. In the Arduino IDE actually, blink. So this is your standard blink sketch. I haven't changed anything. And I'm going to hit upload after selecting the port because it's the first time I've plugged in this board. So port, USB modem, shows up with no problem. I think you should be able to see in the bottom corner there. Yes, it says Arduino Zero programming port. That's interesting. It detects as an Arduino Zero. That must be because I have Arduino Zero selected. Let's change that. Do -do -do. So now I'm scrolling down and finding my Cduino. Here we go. Boards in the board manager. I've selected that. And you should see it change. There we go. Yeah, if you look in the bottom right corner of the window here, you'll be able to see Cduino show on dev cu.usb modem 14301. Okay, so I'm going to hit upload on this and we'll see if it auto detects the pin that the LED is on. And actually, you know, I may not be able to tell if it's detecting it properly because it's already blinking. So maybe they already loaded up it up with that. But fortunately for both of us, I have already uh, opened up the fade sketch as well. OK, so here you can see that it blinked for a second a little faster. And I believe that's because it was uploading, especially given that a moment later, my Mac complained that I had not ejected this before unplugging it. And that means generally that you've got a board plugged in that has reset itself. The computer just always complains about it because it doesn't know what's going on. It doesn't expect you to be using microcontrollers. So let's pull up this fade sketch now, and I'm going to see how that works out for us. Let 
That looks to me like it's programming. It's done uploading, the CPU has reset. This might be using a different pin. Oh yeah, this is on pin nine. So let's see where pin nine is. The, the blink sketch that is the sort of default uses a, um, an LED built-in variable that is uh, determined by the board itself when it's defined in the board manager. The fade sketch is not defined that way. It's uh, hard-coded to pin nine. So we're gonna figure out which one of these is pin nine and hope that it's one of the PWM pins. Probably is, okay, so pin nine is over here. And then we should have a ground pin which may not be marked on this side of the board. Okay, look it up on the shell page. Mm -mm. Where is my ground pin? Okay, so it's two in on this side over by the LEDs. All right, so I'm going to plug in an LED that I have on hand here. Uh, this is ground and then these other pins here are colors. Oh, hey, there we go. Was that pin nine? Yes. So get this actually plugged in. Huh, we're getting more of a blinky effect. I wonder why that is. It's possible that my breadboard is not super happy with me, but let's try one of the other colors in this RGB LED. Not much effect here. <clears throat> I'm going to try another one that I have prepared. Uh, let's see, we've got the ground pin over here and the power on that side. That is pin nine, right? If not, we may have to monkey around with this a little bit. Nine is three in from the end. Ground is two in from the end. Hmm, I'll try doing it directly. Oh, interesting. That must just be a problem with the breadboard. All right. Or it could be the fact that I haven't actually soldered these pins on yet. Usually I'll solder the uh, headers on immediately. So that's probably what's causing our problem before. Okay, so here we have a fading LED, beautiful. That took like two seconds in the Arduino IDE. And now I can solder this on so I can actually use it in a breadboard. The nice thing about breadboards is that you can use them to stabilize the header pins while you're uh, preparing to solder. So while my iron heats up there for a second, I'm gonna see what else we can upload. Ha <laughs> ha Someone says for sure this is not really live. I don't think that's true. I'm pretty sure that I'm live right now, but uh, if you don't believe it, I can't convince you. All right, so my soldering iron is about hot now. We're counting up from 237. We're gonna pull the solder over here. And I'm gonna unplug this. You should always unplug before you solder anything. 300 Celsius, and I'm gonna fix our focus. All right, so a little bit of solder on the tip of the iron. Mine seems to be a little ornery this morning, but there we go. I'm not sure how people think that I'm gonna set something on fire with this. It uh, It's not really plausible with a tiny microcontroller and an LED. I would actually be impressed though. Um, if you are able to set something on fire using 3.3 uh, volts from a microcontroller pin and um, an LED, I would love to see it. So we're halfway through. Just doing the other side. And this should give us a much more stable connection through the breadboard to whatever we want to plug in. Come on. The lead-free solder can be a little bit more finicky to work with, but I know some 
really amazing hardware experts who do really tiny, beautiful soldering with lead-free solder. And so I believe that it's a good, um, it's a good tool. You just got to be a little bit more expert with it. And of course, lead-free is better for if you have children around, animals, anybody who might get their hands on this, or anything that you might be throwing away at some point. Okay, let's give this another go. And I'm going to try plugging in the LEDs directly to the breadboard this time. Let's start with this one. So two in from the end and three in from the end. Ha-ha! Beautiful. So there's our Seduino show fading an LED. Again, if you're curious about this board, check out the links in the description below. I've linked to the product page as well as to the wiki. It's a beautiful tiny board. Uh, as they mentioned, it's designed for wearables and it does have a battery connector on the back. Let's pull that out actually and have a look. Unplug you. Do, do, do. And yeah, the battery connector is right here, VN and ground. Then you've got a couple other connectors which are labeled on the website, but not on the board itself. So uh, for that, let's pull up the seed website. One more time before we sign off here. Yeah, so if you go to the shop page here, it's one of those pictures linked at the top as well. You get the dimensions and a ton of other information about the different aspects of this board. So here you have SWDIO, uh, reset, ground, and SW clock. Beautiful. All right, uh, if we have any other questions before I sign off here, let's have a look. We have some questions or some stories from the communities, but no actual questions. So I'm going to sign off for now. Uh, check out the size of this. It's so minuscule. You can do all kinds of tiny little things with this wearables, but also like little desktop widgets and things. I might use it to program a Pomodoro. I'm always about Pomodoros because I'm always having trouble being productive. <laughs> uh, if you're curious, look up the Pomodoro technique. Uh, and this is the perfect little thing to sort of sit in your pocket or on your desktop. Oh, I shouldn't have soldered the headers on. I could have a little pocket device. I would put this in like a pocket watch. Uh, I'll, maybe I'll have to get another one and do that because they're only $4.90. All right, go check out the CD we know show. Uh, we'll catch you next week and have a wonderful weekend. Hack on.